Hi, my name is Bob. I'm one of the contributors on the Yetzig Web Framework project. Yetzig is a web framework written in Zig, and I'm going to show you a quick introduction to setting up a new project and running an application. So the first thing you want to do is go to the yetzig.dev website, and then you can go to the downloads page. And as you can see, we support Linux, Mac, and Windows, and you can download a pre-built binary, which we build every day uh, on the latest main. Or if you prefer, you can uh, compile this yourself. So it's completely up to you. So we're going to take the Linux download. I'm just going to grab that link. And then I'm just going to download it here. Then I'm going to unzip the binary package. And then you can see here, I've got this Yetzig binary. So the first thing I need to do is just give it executable permissions. This is a step you won't need to do if you're running on Windows. And then I'm just going to move this into my path. So you can see now that that is now available and I can run this here. Cool. So you can see that we've got a few commands that we can run. We're not going to use all of them today, but we're just going to initialize a new project and run the project. So if we just go into the previous directory and do yetzig init, uh, it gives the default uh, project name as the current directory, but we don't want to use that. We're just going to call the project demo. And you can see here it's going to create the project in the demo directory from the current directory. It's created a few files. I'll go through those in a second. I'm just going to start building the application and then talk through the files in the background. So just like any other uh, Zig project, you can just do Zig build run, and that will start compiling and running the application. OK, so that's running in the background. So we've got a few files here. We've got a build.zig. This is a standard build.zig with just a, cap a couple of extra features, so just initializing yet zig itself, but most of it is just completely standard. You've got a source.main, which actually starts up the main application. Um, we've got a demo middleware. I'm not going to go into middleware today, but this is just to show you how middleware can be used. And we've got a view. Now, these views are your roots. So the root.zig is a special one because this means the slash um, path. But if you were to create a view called cats or something like that, then slash cats, if you have source app views cats.zig, then this will redirect traffic from the cats URL to the cats view. And we've got a couple of templates as well using the Zimbal uh, templating language that the Yetzig framework uses. And we've got the main index.zimple and also a partial called uh, content as well. We've got a few static assets there as well. OK, and we've got a uh, server up and running, so we're just going to go into our browser and load it. So this is just a demo project that you get when you initialize a new project. So I'm just going to very quickly go through the files that we've got here and what they do. OK, so I'll open build.zig. As you can see, it's really, really, really um, similar to a standard uh, zig build.zig. Uh, we do import yetzig here, and then we use this further down here where we call yetzig init. That's the only difference to a standard uh, zig build.zig. OK, and then we're going to um, open the root. Uh, we'll open the source main first. <coughs> so this is where the application is initialized. And you can see it's pretty uh, basic and straightforward. You won't really need to edit as much unless you're customizing options or adding middleware. So the really important stuff is in the views directory. So if we open root.zig, so like I said before, this controls what happens when you access the slash path on a uh, URL. And the index function, you can see here it's got an explanation of how the routing works. Um, so if you just do slash without anything else and it's a get, then it will go into the get function, sorry, the index function. And you can see that we return a request or render OK at the end, and this will do a 200 OK response. So one really core cool feature of uh, Yetzig is the way that it handles data and how it deals with outputting JSON and templates data. So we initialize a root data object, and this just calls data.object. And this is a JSON compatible object. So this gives you the ability to add data that can be made available in your templates and also data that can be accessed through a JSON endpoint. And you get both of these by default. So the first thing we do is we do root.put message. So this is the key and then this is the value and we're setting it as a string and it's going to be welcome to Yetzig. Now, if we open the root index.zimple template, you can see here that this is just standard HTML with a little bit of extra syntax. So we've got some curly braces here to access a param. So this is accessing .message param. 
And this is actually this one here. So if we pass a param called message, then we put this into the data object. And I'll show you that in a second. And then here we load a partial. In Zimple, the syntax for loading a partial is a carry character followed by the path minus the underscore and minus the dot uh, Zimple extension. So I'll open that uh, partial now. And you can see here that this is just more standard HTML with some extra syntax here. Now, um, I won't go into too much detail with Zimple, but basically if the line starts with uh, an HTML tag open character, then it's treated as um, HTML with some interpolation. But if it doesn't, then it's just standard zig. So you can do if true, then do this, else, and obviously this would never happen. So if we were to run this now, then we would only see this section and this section would be omitted. But you can use any uh, zig that you want there. It's just vanilla zig. A simple template just gets compiled into a zig function and then executed by zig itself. So if you can write zig, then you can put it here. So this is the bit that actually displays the message that we put into the view here. So this is just hard coded to welcome to yetzig. And that's why we see this h3 tag here. And then if we open the index uh, template, you can see that we also refer to this message param. And this comes from, again, here. So this is if we pass a param message. So I'll do that now. So if I do message equals hello, then this then appears at the top. OK, and you can also see here that we're setting an example header. So I'm just going to show that in a curl request. And I'm going to pass dash v so we get the full output. And you can see that that header is passed there as well. Now, like I said before, the data that we're setting here is to make the data both available in the template, but also for people accessing as JSON. So if we were to do the same request, we will remove the dash v. And instead, we're going to pass the header. We'll do content type application JSON. And you can see that we just get back JSON now which is, you know, by default, something that you get on every single um, view function that you implement. OK, so that's a really brief um, introduction to Yetzig. If you'd like to learn more, then feel free to come and join our Discord, read through the documentation. If you want to contribute, we're on GitHub, Yetzig Framework slash Yetzig. And if you want to contribute to uh, the Zig project itself, it would be much appreciated. It's still ongoing under development and any donations would be welcome there, I'm sure. And if you want to give the repository a star, that would also be appreciated. Thank you.